The next big thing in science is actually really, really small. It's nano. Hi, my name is Anissa Ramirez. Welcome to my lab at Yale University. I'd like to share with you nanomaterials. When you shrink materials to the very, very small scale, they have strange properties. Let's look at this effect in action. So what color is gold? Well, that's a silly question. Gold is gold, of course. It's got a yellowish hue. However, when we shrink gold to the very, very small scale and make it nano size, gold's no longer gold. It's actually red. Here I have nano gold floating in water. The nano gold particles are on the order of 100 nanometers across. Although they don't glitter, they're still gold. So what is nano? What is a nanometer? Well, a nanometer is one billionth of a meter. That's billion with a B. Here I have a meter stick. Imagine I were to slice this a billion times. One of those would be a nanometer. If that doesn't work for you, try this on for size. Imagine pulling out one of your hairs and whittling it 100,000 times. One of those slivers would be a nanometer. It's that small. So what happened to the gold? Well, on our scale, gold is yellow, it's stable, and it's a metal. However, on the nano scale, gold is now red, it's a catalyst, and it's a semiconductor. The properties are absolutely different. And it has to do with the way that we've changed the geometry. We've increased the amount of surface. Another way to say that is that we've increased the surface to volume ratio. Here's one way to demonstrate that point. Here I have two sets of eight blocks. One is stacked, one is separated. The separated blocks equal the nanoparticles. As you can see, the separated blocks have much more surface available than the stacked blocks. More surface means more opportunities for electrons to interact with the surface. If that doesn't work for you, let's try this on for size. Here I have two pieces of aluminum foil. One is flat, one is curled up. They started off from a sheet that was around the same size, but the flat one still has a very large surface area. This one does not. More surface area, just like the nanoparticles, is more opportunities for electrons to interact with the surface and to create, in this case, weird optical properties, one of them called surface plasmon resonance. This is the reason why nano gold is red. Now, gold is not the only material that does this. There are other materials that behave this way, too. Cobalt, for example. Here I have pieces of cobalt. It looks silvery and boring. However, when we make nanocobalt and we put it into glass, we get a beautiful blue, as you can see in this vase. In fact, the next time you see stained glass, that's actually nano in action. So besides these pretty colors, what else can nano do? Well, in the future, scientists hope to use nano gold as a way to cure cancer. They'll move these nanoparticles directly to the tumor and kill the tumor on location. That's really cool. But for now, Nanomaterials are used in solar panels, batteries, cosmetics, water-resistant pants, and antibacterial socks. That's right, socks that don't stink. As you can see, the opportunities for nano are pretty endless. What we know for sure is that the future for nano is huge. Small particles with strange properties are going to be one of the many marvels that make the future products a reality. My name is Anissa Ramirez. Thank you for joining me in my lab. I hope you'll join us for another Material Marvel.